Yes. Okay. Um, my intention is to give you a short over look of uh, what's going on in Germany and what kind of potential for the German-Indian cooperation will be the result of this. And if you have any detailed question, I will be very happy to receive your questions via the chat or directly uh, afterwards. And um, yeah, I'm happy to discuss with you today or even the days coming. Thank you. And uh, yeah, starting with the profile of our association VDMA, what's VDMA about? My association here in Germany is the largest industrial association in Europe. We have more than 3,000 member companies from all kinds of machinery industry. My responsibility is just the marine equipment group, but even this is 200 member companies from all industrial sectors in the machinery industry, uh, in the machine marine part of the machinery industry, mechanical industry, uh, engineering, electric engineering, even interior outfitting and other uh, uh, branches uh, related to shipbuilding and offshore equipment as well. And uh, our branch in Germany is, uh, as you all will know, uh, of a big importance in the world market. So uh, we have around about 400 manufacturing industrial companies in this branch with altogether 63,000 employees and a tur turnover of around about 11 billion euros. Uh, just to give you a um, view, you also know the German shipbuilding industry, which is also very famous with leading shipyards and so on. But the turnover of the shipbuilding industry is um, just half the turnover of the marine equipment industry in Germany, which shows the big importance of this industry in Germany. A special um, characteristic of our industry is also the high export share. The export volume is around about 75% of the turnover. That means Germany has a strong presence in the world market, but also um, yeah, is um, specified by uh, many, many cooperations with um, shipbuilding and ship equipment countries and companies worldwide. Germany is the world's largest exporter of marine equipment. If you look at the turnover just, uh, then some Asian uh, nations have a larger ship equipment industry, but in the turn in the export business, uh, Germany is the number one. Yeah, this uh, just shows you the development of the turnover of our branch of the sales every year, and you see um, compared to the shipbuilding industry cycles, which have been much much heavier ups and downs. Compared to this, it is a relative stable development. This also shows that the German equipment industry is working in different markets, and so it is equalizing a bit uh, much better than in the shipbuilding industry, where you are very much dependent on the cycles of the shipping market and the orders coming in. And uh, you see the big boom um, in 2008, for example, in this graphic. Uh, the the um, column number five is the biggest one. Um, it was nearly the double size, the boom in the shipbuilding industry. So our industry did not uh, take all these ups and downs, but um, could shift uh, much of this, um, uh, these uh, uh, ups and downs to more than one, two or three years. So you see it's a relatively stable development and this also helped us the last years with so low um, orders from the shipbuilding, especially the co commercial shipbuilding industry. And uh, even the, um, the downs of the last years have not been so heavy compared to other branches. Uh, so that is a good uh, starting point for um, uh, stable and also innovative development of a branch if you have a stable market development of some kind. And um, of course, we had a low uh, point last year due to the pandemic worldwide, uh, but we expect a very strong year in 2021 because um, you all know about the order situation in the shipbuilding industry. It's a boom at the moment, uh, especially in commercial shipbuilding, 
container vessel, for example, it is a, a part of the market where the German marine equipment industry is very strong. So the container shipping has a boom. And uh, so we expect uh, a two digit uh, growth rate uh, in 2021. So um, what's going on in the shipbuilding uh, worldwide? So I always like to start with a map. Um, I like such maps uh, showing um, where is the industry uh, situated and uh, what relations are between the nations. If you see just the colors of the countries, that is showing the size of the shipbuilding industry in the respective countries. Uh, just roundabout, of course. Uh, so which capacity of building seagoing ships has the um, specific country? For example, the dark blue is just, just three countries here, China, South Korea and um, Japan, uh, which are able to build more than 300 seagoing ships per year. Um, that is, of course, roughly. So uh, at the moment, uh, they just part of these countries reach these figures. Um, but the second color is um, you know, the mid-sized shipbuilding countries, which can produce between 50 or above 50, but below 300 ships per year. That is uh, countries like US, Russia, Turkey, but even Indonesia and uh, Vietnam and uh, such countries. Also India would belong perhaps to this uh, section. It depends a bit on the individual market development. And uh, then we can have uh, several other shipbuilding countries like Germany, which uh, produce less than 50 seagoing ships per year. Um, but what does the numbers mean, the, the rankings here? That is the ranking of the world shipbuilding, ship equipment industry. And you see, as I mentioned uh, in the export, Germany is number one, followed by three Asian countries, China, uh, Japan and, and um, South Korea, and then again followed by other European uh, ship equipment countries. Uh, this shows quite good that the equipment industry still has a focal point in Europe, uh, different from the building of the ships, uh, where more than 90% uh, are being built in Asia, as we all know. Uh, but the equipment industry is very strong. So we are used to cooperate between the Asian shipbuilding countries and the European ship equipment industry. That's just to give you the background. Uh, that is in other countries, it's quite different. For example, if you look at the Chinese shipyard market and the ship equipment industry there, they are very much focused to each other. So the ship equipment just delivered inside China and very, very low export or international cooperation business. That's completely different with the Europeans, which are used to cooperate with shipyards worldwide, wherever they are in the US, in Indonesia, Australia, China, India, everywhere. So uh, that is a big um, uh, advantage of the industry in these times, but I will come to this point later. Um, let's first have a look at the German shipbuilding portfolio and what is going on in the shipyard industry in Germany. And as you also will know, the German shipyards are specialized on high-tech ships. Uh, they are not simple, uh, cargo ships are not even anymore built in Germany. Um, they are building special ships, ferries, of course, a big cruise liners, um, LNG uh, ships, yachts, uh, mega yachts, and so on. That is a uh, focal points of the German shipbuilding. Um, these highly specialized shipyards need highly specialized and highly reliant, reliable uh, um, equipment manufacturers. And that is a strong network in Germany and Europe um, to deliver the, this high-tech equipment in close cooperation with the shipyard to these special projects. Um, these projects in let's say, an average, have a, an, a share of supplier contribution of more than 80%, 85% here, for example, for a big cruise ship. And that is very specific and very different, of course, from a standard bike carrier or tanker uh, being built in China or Korea. Um, yeah, you need a reliable and innovative 
network for such projects. And this, uh, there's a strong demand, not just for a partnership between shipyard and equipment companies, but to integrate all players in this big project um, value chain. The ship owner has to be integrated, the shipyard system integrators in between to integrate the different modules and systems on board. Yeah, suppliers, of course, don't forget the class and also the designers. For all these parts in the shipbuilding value chain, we have a closed network, and that is essential for successful projects of this size and this complexity we see here in the pictures, for example. Yeah, now we are coming to the equipment industry. And what is the big trends here? Of course, we have already heard in the conference today and in every shipbuilding conference, the big trends we all know, digitalization and new fuels, car uh, yeah, zero carbon uh, um, scenario technologies and so on. Um, this is a big point, uh, but let's start in general. The ships are becoming more uh, bigger and also more complex. And the complexity, even in the cargo shipping, not just in the fields I've shown here from the German shipbuilding industry, but also in the standard cargo ships and container ships, bikers, tankers, we get more and more complex technologies on board due to the big trends of um, yeah, efficiency, uh, environmental reg regulations, and also the digitalization uh, as an enabler for more efficient shipping. So uh, we need, for this co increase in complexity, we need more reliable technologies on board. Of course, green and safe technologies are all high ranking in the equipment development. Um, yeah, the big topic of marine energy transition is also a topic uh, which cannot be handled in the shipping industry itself. So it has to be linked with the with the standard land-based developments we have there. So we have a strong uh, cooperation also between maritime industry and land-based machinery industry and energy industry. Uh, that is also very characteristic here in Germany. Uh, we have to work together because this all is linked together. Uh, we need these new fuels uh, for this energy transition. And um, we have to check out in different branches in aerospace on the road uh, in heating and uh, energy production and so on. We have to um, uh, try out what's going on and have to develop quickly to get these, in future times, these synthetic fuels, um, carbon-free uh, possible or, or, or carbon neutral. That is so important. And yeah, we, this big network uh, is, um, is a basic ground for all these developments. Yeah, and the digitalization, as I've mentioned, is the enabler for every, everything, of course. And later I will show you one example uh, how this works. And yeah, efficiency and cost reduction, it is the same uh, metal from two different sides, of course. Yeah, um, what are the, con the consequences for the maritime equipment industries? We have more and more uh, growing value of the equipment delivered to the ships. Quality and reliability is essential, is needed. And um, yeah, the ongoing trend for bigger packages and bigger uh, system solutions which are delivered onto the ship um, is remarkable. So a small equipment manufacturer cannot anymore deliver just one component, but he has to be integrated with other equipment manufacturers to bigger systems. And um, that is a trend. The shipyards want to buy in um, not so many bits and pieces, but systems which are working together as a module installed on a complexity uh, on a complex ship. And uh, that is a trend, <coughs> of course. Um, yeah, uh, don't forget uh, to look at the life cycle costs, not just uh, at the initial costs of a uh, shipbuilding project. And uh, we see this now that the ship owners, especially the, the operators of the ships, are looking more and more at these long-term life cycle costs of the ship from the birth uh, for a new building until the scrapyard in the future. So 
that is what is so important uh, to look the hue uh, look at the complete life cycle of the ship yeah and all these development trends i've described here they all lead to a stronger demand for more cooperation between the companies inside a country and in, a, in, the, in the region where you are working, but also internationally, of course. And that is the sentence I marked here in red. Um, that is a big cooperation opportunity, even for, especially for com companies in India and Germany to work together uh, because every uh, location has its uh, advantages. And uh, to combine this, that is the best solution for the world market. We are convinced that this will help and we have to look more across borders. And um, yeah, the last picture you see here is um, stating this MTP and I develop, I will give you some more information on this project. What does this mean in detail? Let's see at the next chart. Yes, MTP means um, model type package. It is just an abbre abbreviation, but uh, you should learn about what what's going on uh, roughly <laughs> at least it is a standard for digitalization and automation on board so what we always say is uh, everybody knows the digitalization is going on very quickly we have more and more data on board and um, uh, but everybody uh, stating we would, could be much quicker and much more successful if we would have any standards but standards are lacking we do not have the standards we need for the exchange of the data and for having plug-in-play solutions on board. And um, yeah, that is a background of the development of this standard. I will give you this example here to let you show how in Germany the industry works together um, to solve such a problem and then also offering this for the world market, of course. Yeah, uh, the background is um, the better integration of subsystems, like I've uh, described before, subsystems on board uh, uh, to yeah, increase the efficiency along the complete value chain, but especially, and I go on in the presentation, the special uh, benefit is on the shipyard side from the first view, because uh, what is the challenge in shipbuilding at the moment? It is more or less the system integration because the functionality and the re regulations I've described, they require more and more communication between the plants and the systems on board. In this picture, you just see the, the piping, not the cabling. <laughs> so that is just showing the complexity of the, just such a big yacht like here, but it is similar in big cargo ships or, or at least in cruise ships, uh, much more complicated. So, um, all, it is just illustrating the many, many systems and plants on board, which have to be communicated. And the interfaces between these different systems and the, the overall automation system of the ship um, are overloaded. And they overload traditional organization in the shipyards and between shipyard and sh supplier. So yeah, what could be the solution? Um, uh, sorry, yeah. Um, this is just illustrating what's going on at the moment at such a sample yard. Here's an example from Lusen shipyard, one of the German shipyards, uh, building such very complex and very fine, and nice ships. And um, uh, they show, for example, today we have the number of signals uh, around about 40,000 signals they have to test, they have to integrate and test in the commissioning and an uh, integration phase in the last weeks uh, before the delivery of the ship. And that is a, even today, it is a risky, difficult, uh, many obstacles, many man manpower needed, and this is all done by hand, more or less, yeah, and <laughs> experienced uh, people, but with a high risk of uh, faults and delays. In future, the number of these signals will double or even rather triple and uh, that is just the nearer future because from all systems more and more data is delivered to this um, uh, overall automation system and has to be integrated so it is impossible to manage 
these increasing numbers of signals uh, to manage this integration into the same time at one shipyard. So the shipyards cry for standards, for a standard to make it easier. And this was here an example from the yacht industry, but it will be the same some years later in the general cargo shipbuilding industry. And what could be the solution? <clears throat> Our proposal, and that is the background of this project, MTP, is to, uh, to have something like a plug, plug and play solution. And um, on the left hand side, you see different modules on board. On the right hand side, the, the automation system on board and the diagnostic systems, navigation, and so on, which need the data from the systems on board. And if you have this uh, wire one standard plug, <laughs> let's say, um, makes it so much easier. So the integration must be plug and play as far as possible to decrease the building time and also to decrease the risk of faults and delays. Yeah, how does it work in general? Uh, we have an example. You all know you, your personal printer or your printer in your office. Uh, if you like to print a page, you have uh, different services the printer does. Uh, we can perhaps uh, forget fax, but uh, print and scan are the main services your printer has to do. And in former times, uh, some of you will remember we had to diskettes or uh, what else, or had to download um, printer drivers for the respective printer, which could connect and uh, tell the computer which services uh, to be done. So we just have to um, um, uh, push the print button on our computer and got the complete page because the service the printer has done has been translated and the, the, the order print this page uh, resulted to, to the right printed page in the end. That was not the case in former times. Uh, the, the computer had to send the signal for uh, next uh, uh, next line, please, uh, or print in A, print in B, and so on. So that is a much more in, um, intelligence now in the printer and, of course, in the standard um, uh, connection between the two via these printer drivers. This could be a little bit of a sample for what's going on in the industry or here in the shipping industry. Uh, we, our example here, instead of the printer, is uh, a fuel separator. Just uh, could be, uh, uh, could be some other um, uh, modules or systems on board. It's just a sample. Um, this uh, fuel separator has two main services. Uh, first is, of course, separate the fuel. The other one is discharge or clean, or how they call it there. So, and this information, uh, the automation system of this uh, module, of this separator, is already intelligent. And this has to be connected to the integrated control system on board. And in between this, as a standard link and interface, this MTP standard works quite well. And it, this leads, in general, to um, integrate or to, to combine and to deliver the respective data for communication, of course, via OPC UA, but also visualization, uh, visualization data for the overall SCADA systems on board. I do not want to go in detail, but uh, if you have questions, we can do it later. And uh, also the services I've mentioned. So exactly this is the data, the, the information which is needed by the overall automation system on board and which takes so much time at the moment to do this for every uh, uh, every component and system on board to integrate this into the overall system. So uh, this picture is showing um, how this would look like in a machinery room or here is the example from a uh, um, research engine room from our university here in Flensburg. Um, we have a, more or less a ship machinery room on land there and can test this all. And uh, this is showing the different systems on board, uh, or here systems in this um, 
test uh, engine room, like tank monitoring, fuel preparation, the diesel engine and generators itself, uh, scrubber, water treatment, uh, and exhaust gas uh, systems. They all are now connected to this overall SCADA system via this MTP, which makes it much, much more simple. It is really working plug and play. The benefit for the MTP standard also is it is not a new development itself, but it is just taken over from the process industry in Germany, especially or in Europe, where the process industries of pharmaceutical and chemical industry, they they've uh, formulated their need for such a standard. And then the industry related to this sector uh, said, it's a very good idea. We should this shift this and um, um, modify it for use in the ship equipment industry or the, for the shipping. And even this has been, uh, uh, even this happened the last four to five years. And now we are ready with a standard and can try out and test it. It is, um, yeah, next picture you will um, have a look at who is involved in this development of this new standard. And you can see there are big shipyards um, integrated, but also all the big players in automation industry, uh, because they also help to find the link between the um, process industry results and experience and to shift this to the shipping industry, special um, conditions. And we have a lot of machinery industry um, companies uh, involved there actively, uh, also sensor makers, uh, system integrators, of course, and universities and research institutions. So um, that is a very colorful uh, group of uh, companies, which all have the same aim. And that is uh, really fun to work in this project, where you see so different parts of our value chain, of our industry and research landscape working together because all see what I explained before, we have a lack of standards. We need to sit together and uh, need to find low hanging fruits to get um, this finally this new standard running. Yeah, okay, uh, but I have to speed a bit, speed up a bit, but you see I'm so excited about the, the result of this project. And uh, if you need any more information on this, you can always uh, click to our website, of course. Look here, that is a sample of our German Marine Equipment Directory. So there you, there you find all companies in our branch. But uh, the same link, you also find information on this MTP project. And you're welcome to have a look there and also to ask your questions directly to between experts. Yeah, this was just a little um, uh, overview of what's going on, what our opinion is with this example of the MTP. Really, that's just an example, but showing you have to work together uh, across borders. And now we are in the phase that we are also looking worldwide to get the right partners into this project to let everybody have the, the advantage um, of the results we have um, uh, offered now for the worldwide shipping industry. Yeah, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to even more cooperation. We are already very good cooperating between German and uh, Indian industry, but we have a lot of potential and I'm looking forward to take use of this, yeah. So thank you very much. And thank I'm you, Mr. Schlegel, uh, for a very uh, uh, fascinating uh, presentation with a very key point that has been uh, uh, on on uh, the minds of a number of uh, industry players, that being uh, a lack of standardization uh, in our industry. And even the very example that you showed, you know, we have uh, purifier separated manufacturers with their own protocols, engine manufacturers, air compressor manufacturers. So trying to connect everyone together uh, has been a challenge and now as you're saying, with the number of data points and sensors increasing, uh, it's a crying call for uh, standardization. And uh, I, I would like to know, uh, uh, is this only limited to German manufacturers or is this available globally to uh, manufacturers from uh, all countries? 
Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, very good question because you have seen in the circle more or less German companies, yes. Um, but the reason is that for the development of the standard, it is much easier to have a limited group and also to speak one language and so on, <laughs> you understand. Otherwise, it would have delayed the complete project. But it's completely open now. So the standard has been developed or let's say modified from the existing process industry standard, modified to the specific needs of the shipping industry. That has been done in this more or less German group. Mm -hmm. um, but now uh, we, are, we are already discussing with a lot of shipyards, uh, equipment manufacturers outside the circle because they are all waiting for the standard. And now we are in the situation that we, from for two months now, we have the standard ready Everybody can download it, and I can send you also the, uh, the link, or, or everybody can ask me to <laughs> receive the link or this standard to have a look in it. And uh, so the automation experts in the respective com companies worldwide may have a look what would it mean for me to be ready for this MTP standard. It is not a high, uh, a, a high burden there, but it is very simple, some steps to be done. And uh, then you would be ready and uh, could make use of the benefits. So it is open for everybody. And that is the purpose also I <laughs> explained here for the mainly Indian uh, uh, audience uh, that you know, please uh, look into the standard, uh, look if it is uh, valuable now for you and um, we offer you any support to take it here. Yeah. Sure. At the moment, we don't have any standards, so <laughs> that is uh, really a big step forward to to go on with this. Right. So, uh, how, how how soon or what's the time frame that you uh, are looking to in order for this standard to become a global standard? Do you have a, a roadmap or a plan to achieve that? Yeah, the plan is okay. It will take uh, two, three, four years. Um, we. If we would have uh, no pandemic, <laughs> we would be a step forward because uh, we have, as you know, we have uh, Meyerwerft in the team there and they promised if we would ha wouldn't have this problem with the cruise industry, uh, we would have now the first ship with MTP on board to also for everybody to look at existing real ship, <laughs> not just in a search engine at a university, but really a real ship, complicated ship uh, with functioning MTP product and um, so this is delayed of course <laughs> due to the market yeah. uh, but we i expect this uh, that next year we will see such a ship running with um uh, with already uh, mtp equipped uh, automation products sure i have a few questions from our participants uh, i'll try and go through them uh, quickly uh, do you have any indian partners uh, for vdma Yes, uh, not just partners. We have uh, uh, four um, uh, four offices <laughs> in India. Right. So uh, we have direct. Uh, I can guide the lady or men who asked this question directly to my colleagues in India. We have uh, very active Indian uh, branch offices of our German association, and they help in especially this cooperation between German companies, which are members of VDMA and the Indian partners. Yeah, just contact them. Or you can also have a look in the internet, just Google <laughs> VDMA India and you find my colleagues there. Oh, okay, that's great. Because I think next question was asking about the location of the Indian offices. I think that can be uh, uh, obtained from the website. Uh, another question on a similar line. Uh, this is from Nana Suvarna asking uh, companies uh, with substantial experience in high-end machining capabilities and a proven track record in aerospace and defense, uh, how could they get in touch with you and other shipbuilders uh, and equipment suppliers in Germany? I think the best way would also be via my colleagues from the India office because they know the respective um, uh, challenges or you have, they do this every day <laughs> to help Indian companies to get in contact with the Germans. Uh, but also, of course, you can uh, address me personally uh, because we need, as I explained also for these developments, especially in digitalization and the new fuels, we need more looking across borders also to other sectors like aerospace and other branches. And this is very welcome uh, for any new uh, 
um, yeah, uh, new ideas and uh, also new contacts from outside. Right. Uh, the next question is from uh, Anil Tyagi. And uh, the question is, what are the marine specific changes done in this MTP protocol that you just uh, shared? Yeah, we have, uh, that is very special now. I don't know if the large side of the audience would be so interested in this. Um, and I'm also not an automation specialist, okay. uh, but uh, just to give, give you a rough idea, of course, we have some products uh, on board which are not existing on the, on, uh, in the process industry where we take over the standard, like rudder engine also we do not have, or, or even a big diesel engines are not typically a part of, uh, um, of um, process and chemical industry. And um, another point is that we have a lot of pipes with diff uh, where it is so important to have different, um, uh, to have markers, uh, which kind of fuel or water or what else is running in the pipe and which direction and so on. And there are se several specific points, also with the classification requirements and so on, which are specific and which had to be adopted in this standard. And this we, you will see in the standard sheet, if you have a look in it, um, uh, that there are many, many ship special specified uh, points now added. And that took uh, four years. It's just the adoption. It's not in developing a new standard because the standard was taken over more or less, copy and paste. Right. But even for these, all these specific points we needed in this very active team, yeah, for four years now. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, one, one last question before we wrap up. Uh, you mentioned in your presentation that 75% of uh, uh, all the manufacturing is exports. And we also saw that, you know, uh, we had over 300 shipbuilding uh, com uh, countries with Ch China, Korea, and Japan, which are in the uh, eastern sector. And we have India kind of in between. And we now have this policy of making India uh, or, you know, it's uh, an encouragement for manufacturers to come into India and uh, uh, build, uh, manufacture their equipment here. Do you see uh, any interest in German manufacturers to uh, come in, especially in the maritime sector. This might act as a boost, uh, booster for the local maritime industry as well. Yeah, that's true. So in general, yes, there are already a lot of our member companies are active with own production in India and even more with a strong cooperation on production partners in India. Uh, so that is the two solutions we already have. And there's always a need because um, uh, the company, it is not just because of cost, <clears throat> uh, which many people think that it's just to do the production cheaper. No, it is a, a proximity to the market. So to be close to the customer, to the shipyard, to the system integrator and so on. And that is so important. And um, yeah, okay. So there's, as um, it will be in parallel with the development of the, Indian shipbuilding industry, then uh, will be also the, uh, the the trend of more and more local production or local corporations in India. Uh, but we cannot. Uh, so uh, some countries in the uh, in the last years have tried to push this via let's say local content uh, measures, even in commercial shipbuilding and military shipbuilding, we know that, but in commercial shipbuilding to push this, to get the companies there first and then develop the market. And I can tell you this does not work. So, so it is, uh, you see a lot in many countries, I will not name the countries, but it never worked um, because the companies, especially the Europeans, not just the Germans, but the Europeans, they look at the market first. Is the market there? Is it worth to go there with such an investment? It is a, always a big investment, even a corporation, but especially an own subsidiary to build up this. Um, it is the, the market has to be there and the proximity to a, to a market in this country has to be there. Then uh, that will be very quick. But just from the outside, from a governmental rule or so, to, that local content has to be fulfilled. It is an obstacle, will be an obstacle for the ship industry in the respective country because they have limited access to 
to the right suppliers then. And um, so that's just my suggestion. My experience uh, from several uh, countries across the Atlantic and also across the Indian Ocean and <laughs> to the Far East, um, there are examples which did not, which failed. Yes, and so that should not be the strategy with local content rules. Rather, is um, make it attractive for uh, so India is very attractive for German investors because of the. Uh, human capital, yeah, <laughs> because of very well uh, educated people. That is always uh, in India ranking very high at the German investment side. And uh, yeah, the price is one of the much more important is the logistics as well, good connections to all uh, uh, markets. And India has benefits there in the middle between Europe and Far East. <clears throat> and so on. So that should be the main point. <clears throat> and of course, the market and Proximity to a, a, a sure. big market is important. Excellent. Thank you so much uh, for a wonderful presentation and your valuable insights. Look forward to seeing you here in person when you visit us next. Yeah, really a pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much.